Producers, how's it going? My name's Josh Letissier, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a more natural sounding shaker for your music. But instead of using a sample, I'm going to be using synthesis, and my synth of choice is Spire, but keep in mind that you can use any synth to do this. Now, why would we add a shaker to our music? Well, there's a few reasons for this. First one, a shaker is a good way to fill out the high end of the frequency spectrum. Uh, second one is to add a bit more interest to your music uh, in a different section of your song, maybe add a shaker after another bar. And finally, a shaker, if done correctly, is a great way to add some groove. And I'm assuming it's dance music that you're making, meaning groove is really important to keep the dance floor moving to keep the groove going. Before we add a shaker, I just want to show you the loop that we're working with here that I just created before this tutorial, so you get an idea of what we're going to be adding the shaker to, and where we're going to be going with it. So let's give it a listen. It's okay, it's a little bit boring. Maybe adding a shaker will add a bit of groove to it. So I see a lot of people adding a shaker using samples, and there's nothing wrong with that. They add in a MIDI clip for a bar, do a 16th note, duplicate it out, and they get something like this. I'm just going to stop the rest of the clips. Now, the trouble with that is every single shake is playing at the exact same volume at the exact same time every single time, which doesn't sound very natural, it's quite robotic. And I know a lot of people will then use uh, different velocities down here, adjusting the velocities so that each shake is hitting at a different volume. But this takes quite a lot of time. And you could also change the timings by moving that one there, duplicating it out, it there, which does make it sound more natural. However, this takes a lot of time, as I mentioned before. And the way that I'm going to be showing you how to make a shaker using synthesis, it's a lot easier to make adjustments in the timing of each shake, the groove, and the volume adjustment, equaling into a shaker that sounds far more natural and less robotic, which in turn keeps the groove going, keeps the dance all moving. So, I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to delete this shaker. Don't need this anymore. Insert MIDI track. Insert a MIDI clip. Let's draw in one long sustained note. Then I'm going to add in Spire. Initialize the patch. I'm going to select noise from the wavetable. I'm going to increase the pitch using the octave. So far, we've got this. However, I'm going to be going to the ARP feature of the synth to make a shaker. Let's switch this on, turn down the gate. I turn up the swing. It's going to start sounding a bit groovier. Maybe that's a little bit too much. I use the EQ to boost up the high end a little bit. You can do this inside or outside the synth, it's up to you. Add a bit of reverb. I'm also going to be using the auto pan audio effect. It's important to turn down the phase to zero or 360 so it doesn't pan 
the audio anymore and it automates the volume as so I want to turn up the rate a little bit more so that's sounding a little bit more human like and more natural instead of robotic as each shake is now playing a different volume and it's also playing at a different time due to the swing and what's great about this method using synthesis is that I can tweak these parameters a lot easier than going into the MIDI clip and adjusting the velocity and going into the MIDI clips and adjusting each timing. So if we listen to this in the mix now for the rest of the loop turn down the mix That sounds a lot better than it was using the sample. And what's really cool in using synthesis for this is you don't have to use noise. I use noise because maybe it sounds a bit more like a shaker. But you can also use different waves. I could use a sine wave. may want to turn the octaves down a little bit. use a square wave, saw wave. You can get really creative with this. Uh, let's just try something completely different. It's completely up to you. The possibilities are endless. I hope you found some value in this tutorial. I'm aiming to bring you one of these videos every week. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you've got a suggestion for another video, make a comment below. Or if you've got any questions about this, send me a tweet, hit me up on Facebook, or check out my website for the full written up tutorial. See you guys next week.